Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a security camera system. And this system will require user input service to change between each camera and to exit the camera. So before we start, let me show you how this works. I'm going to go to play. And here I am in my game. The camera is custom, I can move it around. But if you sit down in the chair and hold E, now I'm in a camera. This is one of the parts that I've added into my game. And it's facing forward so I can see everything that's around it. I cannot move, I cannot do anything right now. If I press D on my keyboard, I switch cameras. Switch and I switch. And you can keep doing this forever and ever until you want to exit. And to exit, you press space and you're back. So let's begin and show you how this works. So if you're thinking this is actually pretty hard, it's not. It's actually very, very easy. So I'm going to be deleting my scripts and starting off fresh. So all I've done is I added a office and a camera part right here. And this is the part that will show the proximity prompt. In a folder in workspace, which I called cameras, I added every single camera. Camera 1, camera 2, camera 3, and camera 4. And I can actually rotate them and set them to how I want them to be. So if I wanted them to face the desk, I can make it face the desk. I can also make this face the desk. And this can be very useful for like prison games or police games. It can be street cameras. However you want your cameras to be, they can be. So inside each of the camera parts, I have made them transparent so nobody can see them. Nobody can collide with them. Nobody can touch them. But you must make sure that they're anchored or else they'll fall. You can make them locked if you want to, but I do not recommend it. Alright, so now that we've finished with the placements of the cameras, where you want each camera to be, and we have the camera part for the office ready, we're going to add a proximity pump inside the part on the desk. Now we have to actually um, set it up. So, action text will be interact with the cameras. Interact. Clickable prompt is, I recommend you keep it enabled because if, you're, if your game also has phone enabled so that people on phone can play it, Cl clickable prompt means that they can click it instead of pressing E. And when you're on phone or iPad, you can't press E. So it's recommended that you keep it as clickable prompt. Um, for Xbox, what um, keypad you want it to be. Hold duration can be one second. Keyboard key can be E, so hold E to enable. Max activation distance, so how far you have to be for it to like, disappear. Name, object, text with cameras. So interact with cameras. Requires line of sight enabled and everything else is good. So now that we have finished with the proximity prompt, we are ready to fire it. So go to replicate storage and add a remote event and name it the camera event. This will be um, our event to fire from the server script to a local script. Because we do not want this to happen with every single player in the game. We want the camera to only change for that player. So in proximity prompt, add a script and you can name it engage script. Just like that. And whenever it's triggered, it will fire it to the client only. So script.parent.trigger connect function player. I'm gonna grab the player. And we're gonna direct this to the camera event in replicate storage. And it's gonna fire to the client only, which is the player. 
So whoever engages it, the script will grab the player and only fire it to that player. It will go through the camera event. And now we can go to start a GUI and add a local script. You can name it the camera script. This must be in started UI as it involves the camera. If it's in somewhere else, it'll totally mess up everything in your game. The camera will explode. It will literally like, right, right, right when you join the game, the camera will be scriptable and it will be locked and you can't do anything. So put it into started UI. The first thing I want to do is we're going to define the camera. So local camera equals game dot, oops, dot workspace dot current camera and also want to uh, define the user input service so local uis which is user input service equals game get service user input service now we're going to define our folder with all the cameras inside so local folder equals game.workspace.cameras Now we have to define each and every camera So local cam1 equals folder oops, folder.cam1 And you can just copy and paste this four times or three times so This is cam1, two, three, and four It's gonna be two, three, and four And we're also gonna define the Player. So the player is game that player is that local player. All right. So next up, we have to um, see what this event will do. The camera event when it is triggered. So game that replicated storage dot camera event dot on client event connect function and we don't need a, we don't need any parameters. So now we're gonna set the camera um, camera dot camera type to uh, scriptable, so we can script it and it is locked. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set by default the C frame of the camera to cam the uh, camera one by default every time it's going to start a camera one now we're going to use the user input service to make it so that every time you press d it changes to the next camera and it'll keep looping and looping and looping until you press space to exit so user input service dot input the in connect function and inside we're going to add input. So if the input dot user input type is enum dot user input type dot uh, keyboard, then so if it is the keyboard that they are using the user input service for, then if input.keycode is D, then we're also gonna have one more if statement. So if um, camera dot camera uh, dot C frame equals cam one dot C frame. So if it's already in cam one, so then it will move to the next camera. Camera.c frame equals cam2.c frame. And we're going to use this for every single one, so four times. And all you have to do is just make it so that if it's already in cam2, it goes to cam3. If it's already in cam3, it goes to cam4. If it's already at 4, it goes to 1. And this will loop it through every single camera. It will never stop unless you press space to exit. Now we're going to add one more, but this time the key code is going to be space and the function is going to be 
camera that camera type which equals custom so it goes back to the player that is everything you need that is that song so if we go test it our camera is by default custom we can go sit down hold E and now we're at camera 1 camera 2 camera 3 camera 4 now we're back at camera 1 and it just keeps going you can't stop and when you press space you jump out of the seat and you go back to the, your default setting now if you want this to be a uh, team like if it checks if you're on a police team or a security team all you have to do is go back to the engage script and add an if statement so if player dot team equals equals game dot teams dot and whatever team it is then it will fire the event or else it can print like player isn't on correct team and that's it. You can also use it to check if the player is in a group, for example, so if the player is in group, I, your group ID, then it will fire it or else player isn't on or in group. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, like this video if you learned something or if it was helpful. Comment down for future suggestions on what I should do next, and I will see you in our next video.